Thank you, uh, Jonathan and Harris, and to the panel. Now, we're now going to move forward into a uh, kind of several kind of uh, sessions which are all about decarbonization. Uh, we're going to have presentations for various companies who are you know, tweaking their products and taking new initiatives towards the whole goal of car decarbonization. Our first speaker is Mr. Stefan Henry, Head of Marine Standards at IDWAL, and Stefan will give us a presentation entitled Navigating Decarbonization Regulations and What It Means for You. Stefan, please. Thank you, Kevin. Good morning, everyone. Hope you enjoy the conference so far. My name is Stefan Henry, as Kevin mentioned, and I'm from Idwell. I'm going to address you briefly about navigating the upcoming decarbonization regulations and what it might mean for you. For those of you who don't know us, Idwell is a global leader in vessel inspections, benchmarking, and analysis. And we're also experts in decarbonization of vessels, having done a number of services and tools and resources to help our clients meet their decarbonization targets. So, the new regulations. The new regulations were ratified by the IMO in June of 2021, and they take two forms. The Energy Efficiency Existing Ships Index, which defines a requirement for the technical efficiency of a vessel. And the Carbon Intensity Indicator Score, the CII score, which measures the operational efficiency of a vessel. So what are they? Let's start with the EEXI. In effect, it's a calculated score to measure how energy efficient the design of a vessel is. It only applies to how the vessel's designed and what type of technology it's got fitted, uh, and not to how the vessel's run. It's calculated um, based on the design and features of a vessel, and the units of the score is grams of CO2 per tonne nautical mile. It's effectively measuring how much carbon dioxide the vessel would produce to move a certain amount of cargo a certain distance, and this is the equation for it. So the smaller the EXI, of course, the more energy efficient the design of the vessel. So now we know what the score is, what are the requirements for it? Well, the IMO have agreed on amendments to MARPOL that require all vessels above 400 gross tons, uh, require them to have the EEXI calculated and develop an EEXI technical file. Um, this calculated EEXI is known as the attained EEXI. This technical file and the attained EEXI will have to be verified by the uh, recognized organization, more commonly known as class societies and will have to be below the required EEXI, which is defined by another calculation based on the vessel's dead weight and type. If the vessel's attained EEXI is above the required, then the vessel's got to make physical changes to reduce it below. Once it's done that, and the technical file is submitted, the vessel's energy efficiency certificate is reissued. So what if this score is above the required? If the attained score is above the required, how can we actually reduce it? As I already mentioned, the scores are measured of the design and features of a vessel, so it can't be improved by any operational means, and the vessel's got to make physical changes. Range of options here, the engine power limiter, of course, or the EPL, restricting the maximum power of the main engine. Hull lubrication, to reduce the vessel's friction through the water. Hull fuel improvement devices, uh, that aim to make the main engines and the auxiliary engines more efficient. And motor inverters, to improve the efficiency of electrical motors on board. Uh, just to name a few of them. In reality, most vessels will probably opt for the EPLs, the en engine power limiters, due to the ease of implementation and the reduced cost of them. Let's look again at the CII. What is the CII this time? Again, it's a calculated score to express the efficiency of the vessel, this time calculated from the fuel consumption, the fuel type, and the distance traveled in a year using the following equation. The requirements for the CII are slightly different. They apply to all vessels above 5,000 gross tons and is based on the data submitted to the IMO data collection system, the DCS, each year. The requirements work like this. First, the reference CII is calculated based on a formula for the vessel's dead weight and type. Then a reduction factor is applied to this uh, reference CII, which is based on the year with a reducing amount each year. From this uh, required CII, we can create the band limits and define the individual CII bands. And then we can use the attained CII, compare it, and put the vessel in a CII band for that year. As we can see in this chart, we can see the bands decreasing each year. And we've plotted on here a vessel which has an attained CII score for 2019 and 2020 in the C band. 
On the red dotted line, we can see the vessel has made no changes and the line continues through on the same trajectory to 2023 when the regulations come into force. And we can see the vessel's fallen into band E. If, however, the vessel makes some operational changes throughout 2020 and 2021 and maintains this lower attained CII score, uh, we can see the vessel still in band C come 2023. So what do these bands actually mean? Well, band A and B, vessels receive no sanctions and they might receive reduced port fees and other incentives. Vessels in band C, no sanctions and no incentives either. Vessels in band D for three continuous years must develop a carbon reduction plan and have this approved by the recognized organization. This is sometimes known as a SEEMP part three. And finally, vessels in band E for one year must also develop this same carbon reduction plan. How can we reduce this attained CII, move into a better band? Um, the vessels can only do this by making operational changes to how it's run and effectively reducing the fuel consumption or changing to a less polluting fuel type. But the easiest option would be slowing down and using less fuel in the main engines. If the vessel has to have an EPL fitted for uh, EEXI compliance, this may also have a positive impact on the attained CII, depending on what the average speed of the vessel is generally. We can also change the fuel type, quite costly to implement, but will have a quite, an effective, uh, quite a good effect on the attained CII without compromising the speed. Alternative fuels, as we've already heard, include methane, LNG, and notably ammonia. Uh, fuel measurement, such as installing fuel mass flow meters. Um, this will mean that the reporting of the fuel consumption is more accurate and that the attained CII score is more accurate. Social energy saving measures, some uh, you may be familiar with these in your own home, uh, turning off lights, reducing the heating, air conditioning, etc. And improving the engine room power management um, to ensure that the engines and the electrical systems are being operated as efficiently as they could be. So with the timeline on these regulations, the EEXI requirements are linked to the air pollution prevention certificate on board a vessel with the requirement having an attained EEXI below a required EEXI and a technical file verified by the vessel's first renewal of the air pollution prevention certificate in 2023, meaning all vessels should be compliant by the end of 2023. CII requirements uh, are based on the attained CII in 2023 which is reported to the IMO DCS by March the following year. So this is when the uh, sanctions and the incentives would come into force and therefore the vessels would have to make these changes throughout 2023 or before that and maintain them. I've also included on here a uh, new regulation coming from the uh, EU. It's already been briefly mentioned called Fuel EU, which is a range of measures, but most notably a limit on the amount of energy a vessel can use in EU ports and in EU waters from fossil fuels. So we've done some analysis. Uh, we've done some mass calculations on the EEXI requirements. We calculated the attained and the required EEXI for around 1,600 tankers, 3,000 bulk carriers, and 1,500 container vessels. This chart here shows the number of vessels already compliant by size groups. Um, on the y-axis, we have the percentage of vessels as compliant with the vessel split into size groups and subdivided into ship type on the x-axis. As we can see for tankers and bulkers, uh, they're mostly already, uh, sorry, tankers and bulkers have the most compliance in the smaller categories, smaller size categories, with a drop off as we move into the mid and larger categories. And container vessels have the most compliance in the very large size categories, um, with again a drop off into the mid categories, but with generally more compliance than tankers and bulkers already. On this chart, we can see the average reduction required for the vessels that are not already compliant, the percentage of reduction required to meet the required EXI on the y-axis, and the vessels again split into size and type on the x-axis. We can see a marked difference in the amount of reduction required on average by category, with tankers generally needing a smaller reduction than bulkers, and smaller again than container vessels, which do need the most, uh, the greatest reduction. Uh, the reason for this, tankers and bulkers general design similarities in how they're designed and as the EEXI is a measure of the design of a vessel. 
Um, and container ships are generally built to travel at higher speeds, so they have generally a further reduction to make. Here we can see the differences between the vessel's types and dead weights on a chart, with the bulkers and tankers being relatively similar, but with container ships here showing the higher required and attained EEXI scores, and with a larger gulf between them. Again, number of reasons for this gulf, because there's a lot of factors that go into the EEXI calculation, but one, for example, is that the dead weight or the capacity, sorry, of the uh, calculation for the container vessels is defined as 70% of the dead weight, as opposed to 100% for tankers and bulkers. And again, because of the similar design of tankers and bulkers, we can see they have similar uh, EEXI situations. This chart, we have done the analysis for the CII for the same vessels. We've taken the 2020 scores, attained CII scores, and banded them according to the 2023 criteria. And we can see that for tankers and bulkers, a very similar situation again. Uh, generally evenly spread between either side of the C-band with a majority in the C-band. And for container vessels, the majority are in the E-band with decreasing amounts as you move through to the A-band. Again, this matches up with what I said earlier about the fact that container ships have generally higher speeds so that they will have to make the greatest operational changes in general over the coming years. So, to summarize very quickly, EEXI is a measure of the technical efficiency of a vessel with the CII as the measure of the operational efficiency measure. Coming into force from 2023, so the physical and operational changes will have to be made throughout 23 or before then and maintained. And most vessels will likely be affected in one way or another, unless they're already compliant or they've already made the changes required, or they're very small or in terms of container ships, very large. But in general, container ships will be mostly affected, will be affected mostly, and will have to make the greatest speed reduction if that's how the majority of vessels choose to comply. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs>